Welcome to 21st Sports 2015 Season Preview for the St. Louis Rams. We're going to go over the roster and the season schedule and make predictions for every single game in the regular season. But let's get started with the roster. And at quarterback, we have a new guy under center. It's Nick Foles as they traded Foles for Bradford. Bradford had had those injury issues. And so now they have Foles and they kind of traded one guy with injury issues for another guy with injury issues as Nick Foles has had some trouble staying healthy as well. Of course, he is tall at 6'6". And they got Case Keenum as well. He's tall as well. But uh, Nick Foles, if he can play at the level he's capable of playing and if he can stay healthy, then he could be a big addition to a team that is loaded up and down their roster, especially on the defensive end. But Nick Foles will be taking over at quarterback. And then at running back, they drafted Todd Gurley out of Georgia. Of course, he has some injury issues as well. But if he can get healthy and if he can perform like he did in Georgia in the SEC, then he is going to have a big season. And he can be, you know, very productive running back. And they also still have Trey Mason and Benny Cunningham, and they can produce as well. And a receiver, you got Tavon Austin, who's a threat to take it all the way to the house every time the football is in his hands. They also got Kenny Britt, Stedman Bailey, Brian Quick. I think it's a very talented receiving core. And you also have some good tight ends in Jared Cook and Lance Kendrick. So they got a lot of talent on this team. Big question mark really is going to be, you know, how does Nick Foles perform and also what kind of production do they get out of that backfield? The real star of this team is their defense. Their defense is loaded from top to bottom. They have one of the best defenses in football, especially up front. They are so deep and they are talented. And you got Robert Quinn at defensive end and Chris Long, and then in the middle. You got Aaron Donald and Michael Brockers, and they also got Nick Fairley, the former Lion. So they have a solid, you know, front line. They got some good backups as well. And then at linebacker, you got Akeem Ayers on the outside, as well as Alec Ogletree. And in the middle, James Laurinaitis. It's a very talented linebacking core. And on the corners, you got Tremaine Johnson and Janoris Jenkins. They're talented as well. Free safety, Rodney McLeod. And strong safety, TJ McDonald. So, I mean, they're loaded on the defensive and There is no weak spot, really, in their defense. They're one of the best defenses. But the problem is, though, they play in the NFC West. It's one of the toughest divisions in all of football, if not the toughest. And you got some of the best defenses in that division. You got Seattle, Arizona, and this defense right here. So, you know, if they were in any other division, they would be winning the division. And I think, you know, part of me, there is a part of me that really wants to pick the Rams to win the division this year, except the question marks, you know, with Nick Foles and also with what kind of production they're going to get out of that backfield. But the defense is just so solid. So we look at their special teams. And at kicker, you got Craig Zerlean. Apologize if I'm saying that wrong. I've heard it said every single way. Zerlean, Zerlein, which one is it? You know, it seems even you listen to broadcast announcers, everyone says it different. You know, what am I to do? But so the punter is Johnny Hecker. And then returning punts, you got Tavon Austin. He said he's a threat. He could score on those punt returns. And then in the kick returns, you got Benny Cunningham and Isaiah Pede. And Tavon Austin might be getting in there as well. So they got some good special teams. They're pretty solid there. Of course, like I said, you get, you get to change over a quarterback. That's one of the things you got to have consistency at quarterback. But we'll see. Maybe this is the beginning of consistency now that they got Nick Foles. Like I said, if he can stay healthy, but that has been an issue for St. Louis quarterbacks, most notably Sam Bradford. But let's look at the regular season schedule and go over every game and make our picks. Starting off week one, September 13th, 1 o'clock kickoff. All these times are going to be Eastern. Even though I know uh, in St. Louis and Missouri you're in the central time zone. But starting off, they're going to be hosting the Seattle Seahawks. I do have the Seahawks win this game, but I would not be surprised at all if the Rams can pull this one off. They very well may likely win this game, but officially I have the Seahawks win it. So in week 2, September 20th, 1 o'clock, it's going to be in Washington against the Redskins, and I believe they get this win right here. They shouldn't have too much of a problem beating the Redskins. 
they have just such a solid D. They're going to be having a sack party. That's what they do when they go to Washington. They have a sack party. So then week three, September 27th, they're going to be back home this time against the Pittsburgh Steelers. And, you know, I had the Steelers win this game. I think, But I, I think St. Louis could win this one. This is kind of a toss-up here. You know, it could go either way. I just think the Steelers are actually going to be a pretty solid team. And at this point, a lot of it has to do with this is going to be Le'Veon Bell's first game back. And I think his first game back, he's going to tear it up. Even though if any team can shut him down, it is the Rams. So then week four, October 4th, they're going to be going to Arizona to face the Cardinals. It's a 425 kickoff. And I have the Cardinals win this one. It's in Arizona. You know, it's a tough game in the division. Then I got the Cardinals win this one. And so then, you know, a lot of it has to do just because I don't really have confidence in Nick Foles and also the issues, you know, in the backfield as well. Like I said, if Todd Gurley gets healthy and he starts playing at a high level like he's capable of, and if Nick Foles plays at the level he's capable of, then they really could have a big season. But those are big question marks. So in week five, October 11th, they're going to be going to Green Bay. It's a one o'clock game, and it's a tough, you know, opening schedule. Having to face the Seahawks week one, the Steelers week three, the Cardinals week four on the road, and the Packers in Lambeau Field in week five. It's just rough. They did not make, you know, they didn't make it easy for them. And the schedule makers, you know, it's like, what is going on with these schedule makers? Why are they getting such tough schedules to teams that are on the verge of finally having success? It's like they gotta earn it in the NFL. That's how it goes. So in Lambeau Field, I gotta go with the Packers. So that takes us to the bye week, and then in Week Seven, October 25th, one o'clock game. They are back at home against Cleveland. They get back in the win column. I believe they can win this one. And then in, they should have no problem beating the Browns. And in Week Eight, they should have no problem beating the Niners. Second straight game at home. This is November 1st, one o'clock kickoff. I believe that they will beat the 49ers, their division rivals, pretty handily. And so then week 9, November 8th, 1 o'clock kickoff in Minnesota against the Vikings. And I got the Vikings winning this one, although I could see it going the other way. I wouldn't be shocked to see St. Louis win this one. A lot of it has to do with, you know, how Foles is. Like, if Foles performs at a high level, then this is a game they would win. But, you know, if he's not, then the Vikings take this game, and that's where I have it. So then week 10, November 15th. They're going to be at home against the Bears, and I believe they will beat the Bears in St. Louis. And then week 11, November 22nd, 1 o'clock kickoff in Baltimore against the Ravens, and I believe that they will be able to go on the road and beat the Ravens in Baltimore. And so then week 12, November 29th, they're going to be going to Cincinnati. And against the Bengals in Cincinnati, that's a tough one. The Bengals do not lose at home in the regular season, and I believe they will win this game. So then week 13, December 6th, 1 o'clock kickoff, back home against the Cardinals. And I have the Cardinals beating them in this game. Although it's in St. Louis, like I said, if if they can get production on that backfield, Nick Foles, I keep saying it, they could win this game. But officially I have the Cardinals sweeping the season series. So then week 14, December 13th, 1 o'clock, they're going to be... Back at home, it's part of a three-game stretch. This is the second out of three games at home. This one against the Lions, and I got to go with Detroit here. You know, the Lions have a really solid defense as well, but they just got such a potent offense. Although, I said, I mean, the Rams, there's a lot of games here where it could go the other way, and they could flip their record from where I have it, but officially I got to go with the Lions. So in week 15, December 17th, this is a Thursday night game. This is actually their only game all year long in prime time, which is kind of sad. I wish they would have put them on a Monday and a Sunday night game, especially with how good their defense is. But this one's going to be at home, the third of three in a row at home. This one's against the Buccaneers. I actually think the Buccaneers are going to be a really tough team this year. I'm going with the Bucks. Although, again, this is a game that they could win this one. So they have a bunch of games where it's kind of a toss-up. You know, you got to go with one team. One team's got to win and one team's got to lose. That's just the nature of the game. So I got to go with the Bucks. I just think it's uh, more their year. And so then week 16, December 27th, 
425 kickoff in Seattle against the Seahawks. And I got to go with the Seahawks in this one. And that means they sweep the season series. Although, if they can beat them in week one, then it would be a split. So that's very possible. And it's tough, though, here, too, the way they end with these two road games in the division. Except that with the Niners, I believe they can go into San Francisco in week 17, January 3rd, and beat them. That's a 425 kickoff. And they end on a high note with that win. And it's going to be interesting to see how it all plays out because, you know, uh, if they can win the games that they, they could win that I said, you know, could go either way, when it comes down to Week 16, they might be in the thick of things and these could be some important games against the Seahawks and Niners with the division title on line, potentially. I do have them at 6-10, and 10, but I could just as easily see them 10-6, and 6, maybe even 11-5. and 5. I love their defense, but like I said, on offense, I'm just not convinced. And I just don't have the confidence that they can put up the points consistently. And, you know, Nick Foles, at first, he started off with a stretch where he was not throwing any interceptions. He was incredible. But then, you know, last year, he started throwing those interceptions, and he wasn't protecting the ball as well. So it's a big question mark for me. Is he going to be able to protect the ball? Is he going to be able to keep that defense off the field? And are they going to have a run game that keeps the defense off the field too and keeps them fresh? Because as good as the defense is, if they're out there for the majority of the game, eventually teams are going to be able to put up some points. You know, And if, the, if there's turnovers and the teams get good field position, they'll be getting field goals. So you know, those are some issues they're going to have to address. They like said they're right there on the verge. A lot of it has to do, too, with them being in the NFC West. You put them in another division, you put them in the South, they run away with the South. But, you know, in the NFC West, having to face the Seahawks and the Cardinals, it's really tough. Although I believe they will own the Niners this year. But let me know what you think in the comments section below. Definitely interested to read your thoughts and opinions, whether you agree or disagree. Let me know what you think about the roster and what do you think about the schedule and our predictions and what are your predictions as well. Definitely interested to read them. Thank you very much for listening. It is greatly appreciated. I hope you're having a good day and have a great weekend. And enjoy all the sports.